IBM's annual five and five technology predictions comes out every year and we're getting a look at what it's telling us this year. So each year IBM showcases five ways that the company believes technology will fundamentally reshape business and society over the next five years. So with me to explain uh, what this report entails is Solomon Asafa, the vice president of IBM Research and great to have you here from Johannesburg, South Africa. <laughs> Thank you for having me on, on the show. It's awesome. So, uh, Solomon, let's just start with, can you give me, I, I, I read through kind of a, a debriefing of it. Sustainability is a big theme. So let's talk about kind of the big themes and let's go a little deeper into it. Yes, sure. So this year, our focus is about accelerating materials discovery to enable a sustainable future. And we're intentional about picking this topic because it's important to really think about how we create materials, how we use them, and how we dispose them. And if we look at advances in technology, such as in artificial intelligence and quantum computing, they give us an opportunity to accelerate material discovery. And also they give us an opportunity to look at the problem of sustainability in a fundamentally new manner, right? So that's why we're focusing on sustainability and specifically on acceleration of materials discovery. And there are five areas where acceleration of material discovery is going to be important in our mind. One is about carbon capture and conversion, and that's related to climate change. It is important to capture carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases from the air and convert them into something useful. The second one is about batteries and energy storage systems. Um, there's a lot of focus now, a lot of drive on renewable energy, such as wind energy, solar energy, which are intermittent. So it's going to be important to discover and create materials that are gonna create much better batteries that are more sustainable. The third one is about electronic devices. We take all our mobile phones and laptops and iPads for granted and there's billions and billions of them, but there's a lot of materials that are involved in creating those uh, electronic devices, right? And there's an advanced you know, chemical manufacturing industry behind it. And it's gonna be important to think about how do we create materials that are even more sustainable. The fourth one is about new fertilizers for sustainable growth of crops and food systems. And because of the growth and population that's happening at the moment, it is going to be important to create new materials, new fertilizers that are gonna enable us to feed uh, billions of people. The last one is close to everyone's heart. It's about um, antivirus. And we have seen it from the pandemics. There's a lot of effort that's happening at the moment to discover therapeutics or drugs and vaccines to avert, you know, global pandemics, right? But it's, it takes a lot of effort, you know, decades and billions of investment. We think that technologies such as artificial intelligence and quantum computers are going to accelerate the pace of discovery when it comes to drugs. Mm -hmm. Well, what was really interesting about this report was that it takes about 10 years and 10 to $100 million on average to discover one new material. But with current yes. technologies, and you particularly mentioned AI, that might be able to be accelerated. So how, how does AI play into that? Sure. Let's, when you talk about AI and materials discovery, for example, AI itself allows you to sift through a lot of data, a lot of scientific papers, a lot of publications and patents that have been around for hundreds of years and automate that process of looking through that and deriving insight, right? So that's the first part where AI is involved. The second part then is based on that information, it can recommend to you what kind of simulations you should be doing and what kind of materials are suitable for your purpose. The last part is about automation. Once you have that information, once you reduce the problem space, you can then automate even experiments in the lab, right? So this whole process is very tiresome for scientists. It takes them you know, years and years, but because of AI all the way into the lab, then you can go through many iterations within days, right? Because if you have the automation, the lab experiments could run 24 seven. Mm -hmm. Right. And I know IBM is big in quantum computing, and that would, I'm sure, help crunch some of those numbers as well. Um, 
you know, much more than a human can do. Absolutely. Absolutely. And there's another side to that as well, which is nature is quantum quantum mechanical, right? So a lot of these biological processes and chemical processes that are uh, important for materials discovery are quantum mechanical in nature, which means that quantum computers will do a much better job understanding these processes and then helping us discover new materials. Okay. Now, when you talk about materials, what specifically are you talking about? Would this be like Silicon, like silicon was a new material, um, you know, decades ago. I mean, how, like, what kind of specific things are you talking about? It could be different types of compounds. Let's take the example of carbon capture, right? So in that case, for example, we will need different types of polymers to help us capture the carbon dioxide or to, you know, filter nitrogen versus carbon dioxide. And again, I mean, we need different types of absorbers, absorbers, uh, different materials to help through that whole process. Mm -hmm. Now, so this is a real kind of marriage of science and technology is, is what you're working with here. Talk to me about where, what's the next step? So now that you've done this study and you found that these are the areas um, that we need to focus on for the next few generations, now, what do we do? How do we get this started? So you're right. It's a perfect marriage of science and technology. We have developed the technology platforms that could accelerate the science, right? Now we feel that it's actually important to, um, you know, put science itself at the center of, you know, sustainability uh, to really make rapid, rapid progress. And because we now have the platforms, we can actually bring partners, communities of discovery to work with that. So, so Already there's a lot of progress that's happening within IBM research. We're also getting a lot of partnerships around the world. That's why we have 12, 12 labs across the world, right? We're forming those partnerships so that we can also bring in the domain experts to work with us and to leverage the technologies that we have to make these discoveries. Okay, and I think you would also need a lot of private public partnerships. A lot of governments would need to be involved in something like this too. Absolutely. I think sustainability is a topic that requires involvement from individuals, from corporates, as well as from governments. Uh, for example, we have partnership with the UN on their sustainable development goals, right? And we really believe that it is important to, one, unleash this technology that has been developed, and second, bring science to the center of this, and then really create that partnership to tackle such complex and global challenges as sustainability. Yeah, well, it's a, it's definitely a challenge, but um, I think many people recognize that we need to work on this for the future. And um, so we appreciate, appreciate you coming, Solomon, and sharing the highlights of this report. It's very interesting. Thank you very much. And if people want more information, they can always go to research.ibm.com. Okay. We have a lot more on the predictions as well as the technology technologies that we are developing within the labs and also the different partnerships and partnership networks that we're creating across the globe. Okay, very good. And I look forward to talking to you in six months, a year and getting an update because this will be a multi-year project. Absolutely. So. <laughs> Thanks, Solomon. Yeah. And thank you That's as good. well. Thank you very much. And thank you as well for joining us. We'll be right back.